Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where we help you build your skill and increase your knowledge. In today's episode, we've got a Ford F-150 here that's got some front end damage. We're going to repair it from start to finish today. I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. You're going to learn a lot. So let's get started and tear this Ford down. So the first thing we're going to do on this repair is we got to evaluate the damage. And in order to do that, we have to be able to see what's going on underneath these panels. So we're going to take off the fender, the bumper cover, the headlight, strip these parts down and get a good look. So we have this Ford F-150 all tore down. As you can see, let's look at some of the damage here. You can see right here that this rail is bent out this way. Okay, the top of this rail is bent out. It needs to be brought back in. A hammer and a piece of wood should, take, should bend that back in. It's tore up on the edge here just a little bit. These are things that the insurance company has paid to have repaired. Um, but I want to kind of show you this hood. This is an aluminum hood. And the hood got damaged here right on the corner. It actually bent this section from right here to here. It bent it down. Bent the inside structure of this, folded it under a little bit. Now I've done some work on this with some heat and some dollies and bending it back. And I've got it pretty good but it has a rip right here in the aluminum, two rips actually, that would need to be welded. It also broke loose the weld here from the inner structure and that would be need, need to be welded as well. I don't feel confident that's gonna be a good repair. So I submitted a supplement to replace this hood so we're gonna replace this hood, which it probably could be welded and it probably could, would be fine, but it's also been on the inner structure here and there's gonna to have to be filler in here. It's just not gonna be a good repair, so we're gonna replace it. That's the only other damage on this. Of course, the front bumper, I ordered a front bumper assembly, that's all gonna be replaced. There was no other damage on the frame or the radiator support, other than just maybe some minor cosmetic stuff. And there was no damage on this door either. So, all right, let's get at it. Okay, so we have this replacement used hood. This is an OEM aluminum hood. It's in pretty good condition. We're gonna sand it all down with 320 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander, get it nice and smooth and ready for some primer or sealer. So let's get that done. So as we're sanding down this hood, we're gonna look for any nicks, chips or scratches or any dents that need to be removed and taken care of before we paint. So pay attention to that when you're sanding your hood or your parts. Now, you don't have to sand with an orbital sander. You could do this all by hand if you chose. Um, I'm just using an orbital sander because it's quicker and more efficient for me. I noticed a few chips and scratches that need to be filled before we primer. So I'm filling those with some Roberto Spot 1000. We'll let that air dry and then we'll sand it smooth. Now we need to flip this hood over, strip it down, and sand the underside. We're gonna sand it all with 320 grit sandpaper. Any of the hard to reach or tight areas, we're gonna use a six to 800 grit gray Scotch-Brite. That'll promote adhesion. Now that we have the underside of this hood all sanded, we're gonna completely seal it and get it ready for paint. I am using the Roberto ME1 with the converter to use it as a sealer. This is a great product. And if you're interested in any of the products I use, the links will be in the description. So we're just making nice, clean, consistent passes. We're gonna get everything covered and then we'll paint it. There's no need to use a lot of pressure on this sealer. I'm running it at about 20 PSI, just enough to atomize that sealer smooth. I've opened up the volume two turns out from closed. If you're watching this video and you have some additional questions, 
be sure to leave those in the comments below. I will answer them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, like this video, share it. All of that helps the channel grow and I would appreciate it very much. Okay, so we've let this sealer flash off just a bit, about 10 minutes, and we're gonna go ahead and lay the first coat of white on it. I'm going ahead and I'm gonna spray my edges and then I'm gonna go just do consistent pass to, passes across this panel. You wanna have a consistent speed, a consistent distance. I have the spray pattern wide open. I have it turned two and a half turns out on the volume. I still have low pressure. I'm running around 24 PSI on the paint. Just to give you a little information on the materials I'm using, I'm using a nascent white. The color code on this truck is YZ Ford White. Um, nascent paint is a, a decent paint. It doesn't cover as well as some of the other paints. It's a lower quality and a lower price. Um, but I find the color match is generally pretty good on most colors. Of course, on gold, it, the color match is not as good, but that is pretty consistent with most paints. Gold is uh, usually a tricky color to match. And I am using the Segola 3300 GTO. Great quality gun. If you haven't checked out the review and demo on that gun, check it out. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Okay, so now we're gonna put on the second coat, make sure everything's covered, all the edges, and then we'll go ahead and probably spray a third coat on this just to be safe and make sure everything's covered properly. Okay, so we're just going around making sure everything is covered, all these areas. It's easy with these different angles to get light areas, so you wanna just be diligent and look it over really well. We are not gonna put any clear coat on the bottom of this hood. It does not call for it. Now I'm gonna use some 320 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. We're just gonna knock down that filler and those chips and scratches. Get those smoothed out and flat. I'm just holding the DA flat and machine sanding over it. Now, if you're doing it by hand, you wanna use a block and just block them flat. Now that we have those chips and scratches sanded smooth, I'm gonna machine sand the entire hood with 600 grit sandpaper to prep it out for paint. We will be blending the door on this truck. So we're gonna prep out this door for the blend by sanding it with 600 grit sandpaper, machine sanding it smooth. Stay away from any edges, do not burn through the paint. The purpose of this is to knock that shine off and get it prepped out so the clear adheres to it properly. And the reason we use 600 grit is because 600 grit will not show any scratches through that clear. So now we're gonna strip down this door, remove the door panel, the door handle, and the mirror. Okay, so now that we have those parts removed, I'm able to finish sanding with the 600 grit sandpaper and get this prepped out for paint. We're gonna go ahead and all the areas that are hard to reach under where the weather belt was, around where the mirror was and the handle, we're gonna use a 600 grit gray scotch bright to sand that smooth and knock off the shine. Since we're replacing the hood, we need to blend into any of the adjacent panels, like the right side fender. So we're going ahead and we're gonna prep that fender out with 600 grit sandpaper so that clear adheres properly and scuff pad any of the hard to reach areas. Also the grill surround, I've removed that and we're prepping that out for a blend as well. And then the other part is the top of the bumper. We got a bumper assembly for this vehicle, remove the top pad and we sanded that with 320 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and then went around it by hand with a scuff pad. 
So now we're just gonna prep this all out to paint it. We're washing it with some wax and grease remover, making sure it's good and clean so we don't have any problems with the paint reacting. So just before I spray, I like to wipe it all down with a tack rag to make sure there's no dust or lint that's landed on it. So we'll clean this off and then we'll start spraying the sealer. We'll seal it before we paint it. When you're applying your first coat of sealer, you don't want to put it on too wet. You could have a reaction, a fisheye, or something of that nature. So I like to put it on just a medium coat. So here we're going to go ahead and back tape this hood. We're going to spray it on the, or we're going to tape it up on the back side and then run some paper along it so we don't get any overspray on the underneath of the hood. I am going to spray those edges one more time. So we're masking from those edges back. So this is sealer we're applying to the hood before we paint. We're using the ME1 again with the converter. Okay, so now we're going to clean out the gun, run some thinner through it, clean out that cap, and then we're going to start applying some paint. So when you're applying your paint, you want to stay a consistent distance from the panel away, four to six inches. You want to overlap 70%. I have my spray pattern wide open on the Segoa 3300. The volume, I have two and a half turns out from closed. And the air pressure is 24 PSI. So I put two to three coats of uh, base on this panel. It really just depends on what your color calls for. If it's a little transparent, 
you may have to put more on. So just make sure it's covered and not transparent. Okay, so we're just applying the final coat of base on here, I believe. Make sure everything's covered, all the edges. And then we'll start applying some clear coat. Okay, so now we're going to apply the first coat of clear coat on this. For this project, I'm using the Valspar Euro Clear. This is a high solids clear. I am using the Sogola 3300 GTO to lay the clear out. We got a wide open pattern. We've got the volume at two and a half turns out from closed. And we've got the pressure set at 27 PSI. As you can see, we're putting on the final coat of clear coat on this Ford hood. I'm putting a little bit more material on, slowing down my passes just a little bit, and really paying attention to the clear coat and how it's flowing out. Okay, so we got these parts painted. We painted the hood, the top of the bumper cover, and the grill surround yesterday. And I did not do the blend on the truck itself, on the door and the fender, and the lower part of that door. Did not do the two-tone yesterday, just simply because I ran out of time. I wanted to get some paint on these parts um, so that it can start to cure and we can get this put back together. So I'm going to quickly do a blend on this door. We've got it all. We're starting to mask it off. We're going to blend into this white and blend into this gold here and then paint the gold on the fender. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to blend 
into this fender where the hood meets up with that fender. Just so we have a good color match, we're gonna do that today and then we'll let it cure and we'll be able to start putting this truck back together. So let's finish up taping this door and then we'll tape up the fender and I'll show you how we're gonna do the blend. Okay, so I haven't taped off the fender yet, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got this door all taped off, but now I've taped off this bottom color. Because what we wanna do is we're gonna blend into this bottom color, and then I will pull this paper, we'll let this dry, we'll pull the paper, we'll tape off the bottom color, blend the white, and then we'll clear it all together. So that's a, a little tip for you if you're doing a two-tone color. That's how you can do that. Now you do want to be concerned about metallics in this color at the bottom here. If you're spraying a high metallic and it's landing on the white, you want to make sure it gets cleaned real well. If you're using the same gun, you want to make sure that gun gets cleaned real well because if there's any metallic residue in there, it's going to show up in your paint. So if you have a white, especially a black uh, color, it's going to really show up in there. You're going to really see it. I would suggest using a different gun or um, just making sure it was, is very clean. And you want to make sure the metallics are not still in the air when you go and paint the second color, like the white, because those metallics can still be in the air and they can be landing on your clear coat even after you've cleared it and creating a metallic finish when you don't want one. Okay, so I'm gonna put a couple good coats right on the edge, get that darkened up so it matches the fender properly, and then we'll do a blending procedure out into the rest of the lower color here. So now that this lower color has all dried, we're gonna tack off the white, tape off the lower color, and then we'll put a blend on the edge of this door. Now, when you're blending, you wanna blend the edge, get a good coat of color about three to four inches out on that door. And then you can reduce the paint just a little bit to thin it out and do a blending procedure on the rest of it and gradually transition that color into the old color. <clears throat> On this particular white, it's not that crucial. I didn't reduce it. Um, I was just able to blend it. It's not a high metallic finish and the color is pretty close to begin with. So I was just able to blend that out a little bit and get a really good color match. So the same type of thing when you're blending this fender, I'm just running along the top edge of this. I'm gonna put two or three coats on the top edge of it, and then I will blend it down into the rest of the panel, just gradual transition into the rest of the panel so the color matches well. So this is just a solid color, but if you're doing a high metallic finish, you're gonna wanna use a wet bed. And what that is, is that is base coat binder, and you spray it over the entire panel, and that creates a wet bed for the metallics to lay flat in. So when they, then when you do the blending procedure and blend the metallics, they will lay flat in that wet bed and lay down smooth. And that creates a nice look for the uh, metallics to lay 
and you won't have any problem with modeling, which is a funny looking metallic transition into the old color. So keep that in mind if you're doing something other than a solid color. Um, it's real crucial on heavy metallic finishes. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and spray our first coat of clear. We made sure it was all tacked off really clean. So there was no metallics in this white. And we're spraying our first coat of clear. I'm just putting a medium coat on here quickly and getting it covered and getting a good base for the second and final coat. After waiting about 10 minutes, it's time to apply the second and final coat of clear. We're going to lay it on a little bit heavier. We want it to flow out nicely so we have that nice flat finish. And then we're going to unbag this, put it back together, and take a look at the finished product. Okay, so now Darius and I are going to go ahead and put this truck back together, put the door handle in, the door panel, the mirror, and then the front end parts, line up the fender, and get it ready for delivery. Okay, so the Ford's back together. Let's take a good look at the finished product. Click on this video now and you can watch another great repair video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you don't miss anything. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time.